With eight governors, including Arizona's very own Doug Ducey, speaking now at the White House, let's listen in. Policies and provide quality job training to all Americans so we can easily uh, have some really phenomenal jobs and access to the jobs market and really fulfilling careers and fulfilling careers of a lot of people. Tremendous progress has been made. My daughter Ivanka has been working on this very, very hard for uh, pretty much uh, the last year and a half, and we've created over 10 million. She has, and, and working with some of the great companies, created over 10 million jobs. It's been an incredible job that she's done, and I appreciate it. Where is Ivanka? Hi. Hello, darling. Uh, I guess uh, when you're a father, you're very proud of that, but I'm very proud of the job she did. So thank you very much. Thank you, uh, and I've had the great fortune of visiting with almost every governor in their states to, to discuss all of the three issues that you mentioned yeah. and appreciate everyone's um, tremendous work and advocacy on um, and, and with a lot of child care and, and workforce development. Right, and with a lot of big companies yeah, like Walmart and others that uh, have have really taken, I mean, taken on half a million jobs, 250,000 jobs at a time. It's really been, it's really been great. So we'll let you talk about that. Yeah. Would you like to mention that right now? Go sure. ahead. Well, actually, Governor Reynolds is on our Workforce Advisory Board. Um, this is uh, a working group that supports our National Council for the American Workforce to think about how we can explore education holistically, particularly looking at that mid to late career worker in a time of tremendous disruption and change due to new technologies. So it's been amazing. We've traveled across, across the country and seen the best in class examples where the private sector is really stepping up. We've secured commitments from them to do more. Um, Tip, Tim Cook from Apple, who um, was here today, who's also on the left. advisory he board. Our office. Um, he's been um, a real force on both the advisory board and um, in his commitment to, to lifelong learning generally. Um, Walmart, as you mentioned, I was just in Indiana with Mark Benioff from Salesforce, where he committed to training and upskilling one million American workers over the course of the next five years. So there's been real excitement around this. And, and the best examples are when the private sector shares the skills that they need with the community colleges, the technical schools, the high schools, um, and the students and workers are, are trained accordingly. So we want to highlight and, and push and reinforce that. Really great job. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Very outstanding. Thanks to Governors Doug Ducey, Doug, thank you very much. Terrific job you're doing. Brian Kemp, Brian, Brian, how's it going? Pretty good. I think so. Good numbers you have. Good numbers. Very good. The state, doing well. Georgia. Very good. We're very appreciative of you signing the disaster relief bill yep. very quickly. That was helpful for us. We were with Senator Purdue and Secretary <clears throat> Purdue. Congressman Bishop in South Georgia last week, and our farmers and farm families appreciate it. All right, well, I appreciate the job you're doing. David E. Gay, thank you, David, very much. How's everything going? Terrific. It's uh, going very well, and we also appreciate the, um, signing the disaster relief. As you know, we've had a challenging year in 2018. <clears throat> we definitely appreciate it. Well, we got it done. It was a Tough one, actually, but we got it done. And Kim Reynolds, everybody knows. Kim. Well, thank you, and I also want to say thank you for the disaster relief, as well as uh, E15 year round. We had you in Iowa celebrating that great news. It's great news for our farmers and our economy and for consumers. So thank right. you for continuing to really do what what your administration has been able to do for our, for our farmers and our our economy. Well, we were there yesterday, and the ethanol has been incredible. What they've done. Yeah, really so uh, it's a big boost for the farmers big too. Boost. We really appreciate that a lot. And Chris Sununu. Chris, hi. Hello. How's everything going? Crushing it. Love it. You are doing well. I, I agree with that, Chris. Look, like your tax cuts, SOR grants, right. regulatory reform. Right. It's, it's helping families. Put money in people's pockets. It's awesome. I, that's great, Chris. You're really doing a good job. Appreciate it. And Tom Wolf, Tom? Yeah, Pennsylvania's doing well. I, I really think this is the, the right topic, talking about how we can get more people into the workforce and, and get them the skills they, they need. And we need to talk about this very intensely, and you're doing a good job on this. Sometimes. And we'll be talking about that. We're going to make some pretty strong statements today, and we're doing a lot about it. Uh, Bill Lee, thank you very much. Mr. President. Bill, thank good you very you. much. Thank you. And thank you, by the way, for encouraging the people of Tennessee to help us get education reform done. Right. Um, you spoke out about that for us, and we have made some 
real progress there and, and uh, giving every kid in our state access to high quality education. So thanks working for that. well too. It, it's, we're we're going to implement that and we, we're, we're hopeful and certain that we're going to improve our public school systems in a meaningful way. I've heard uh, amazing things that you're doing with education in Tennessee. Thank you. Really. So you're going to have to teach some other people, maybe. Right? We, we, uh? we like the best practices and sharing them and getting them. And Mark Gordon. Uh, thank you, Mark, very much. Appreciate it. Uh, Mark will be here. Thank you for your support of energy. Uh, making sure Wyoming is part of that energy picture going forward. Coal, natural gas, oil. Wind, solar, all very important parts of our economy going forward. Thank you for your support of our farmers, uh, making sure that we have clear access to trade. It's also another uh, important feature of, of uh, what your administration has done that we appreciate very much. Well, we're doing very well in the trade, and the, as you know, the USMCA is coming along well. I think that hopefully it's going to get approved quickly. Everybody wants it. It's in Congress right now. It's in the House and uh, they're reviewing it, but uh, everybody seems to want it. I think that's very, I think that'll be a very bipartisan bill. It's very much needed for the farmers, manufacturers, the unions like it, everybody likes it. It's something that was uh, very important, and it's some, uh, as you know, Canada's totally in line, and Mexico's totally in line, and now it's up to us to get it passed, and it's gonna have a tremendous impact, I think, on, somebody was saying over $100 billion, very, a, a lot of money, and a lot of jobs, and really a lot of, uh, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna make life a lot more transparent in a certain way, which is a positive, but everybody wants it, and hopefully they can act quickly, because we can have that done very, very fast. If we can get support from, really, the Democrats in Congress, Nancy Pelosi, they have to put the bill forward. Uh, people want it to happen, let's see what happens. We're also joined by Secretary Alex Acosta, and uh, Alex, thank you for the great job you're doing. You're really doing a terrific job thank you. over at Labor. Thank, thank you very much. Through our Pledge of America's Workers and to America's Workers, my administration has partnered with governors, many of whom are in the room, and you folks have been among the most active uh, there are, and I appreciate it very much, and we all appreciate it very much, because it's been incredible. And business is to provide more than 9 million new jobs, and it's going to be over 10 million in a very short period of time. These are workforce development opportunities for the American worker. We've made historic increases to child care block grants that go to states to help families access quality child care. Due to our booming economy, a record number of Americans are rejoining the workforce, including former inmates and those recovering from opioid addiction. And the inmates, it's a very special situation. Uh, it's never taken place like this because the economy is doing so well. You're doing great in your states, but the country is doing so well. It's not so easy to get people and good people, and they're giving inmates and people just getting out of prison, they're giving them a chance. And I have to tell you, the receptivity has been incredible. They're doing really well. Never happened before. They had that stigma, and the stigma was making it very, very hard for them to get uh, jobs. And numerous employers have told me it's, it's incredible. They wish they did it a long time ago. They're having uh, tremendous success with the whole uh, program. They call them prisoners, call them inmates, call them whatever you want to call them. They're really working out well and people are very happy. The employers are very happy. Giving economy, that's happening. And we're also helping a lot with the opioid addiction. We had a meeting yesterday that some of the media was at, and in some areas we're down 17, 18 percent with the opioid. And in some areas we're down even more than that. It's been incredible. We're putting a lot of pressure on doctors. We're putting a lot of, a lot of pressure on different groups. And, uh, and even education, but we're down in some cases more than, and substantially more than 17% in a period of one year. So that was a tremendous meeting we had yesterday. To open up even more jobs for our citizens, we're working with states to address the burdensome and excessive occupational licensing laws, which really are very burdensome. Would you say, Alex? Very burdensome. I mean, it's, a, uh, it's hurting our economy. Yeah. What are you doing about it? 
So we're actually working with several of the governors around the table. Um, Governor Reynolds just recently passed a, a reform for military spouses yeah. so that they will now receive provisional licenses while they're in first state. Governor Ducey um, has passed aggressive legislation, and you just signed it, what, two months ago? Yes. Um, in essence, you know, almost take, rolling back licensing requirements so that individuals can come to Arizona. Uh, governor Wolf is, is working on this. We're working with just about all the governors. The um, Federal Reserve Bank studies show that this is costing us upwards of one and a half million jobs a year. Incredible. Okay. But you're going to solve the problem? Huh? We're working with the governors. This is, this is a state issue. You make it easy for them, okay? Yeah. Over the past 50 years, occupational licensing regulations have nearly tripled, keeping workers out of really good paying jobs. And for the most part, I guess the, state, the states will be handling it. But you do need reference to the federal government, so you'll take care of it. And anything we can do, we're going to make it very easy for you to go very quickly. In many states, workers must pay thousands of dollars and complete months of, and years even of training to enter fields such as real estate tourism and many others. For example, this surprised me, nationally the average training for cosmetologists is 11 times longer than the training for emergency medical technicians and sometimes training costs $20,000 for a cosmetology license. So it takes a tremendous amount of time. and. We have great respect for cosmetologists, but there's something probably a little bit wrong with that. Burdensome licensing laws especially hurt military spouses who may be required to become recertified each time they move, and they're constantly moving. It's amazing when I meet with military families, it's one of the big things they move. They're incredible, they're incredible workers, but they're there for two years or three years or less, and uh, it's a bit of a problem. These regulations also harm low-income families who can't afford the time and the money needed to get into these fields. Earlier this year, a gentleman named Governor Doug Ducey, my friend, <laughs> signed a law into, uh, into existence, universal licensing recognition, which accepts occupational licenses granted in many states. I applaud Governor Ducey, and I always have. He's doing a fantastic job Thank you. in a fabulous state. Thank you. Arizona's doing. You're doing good for pioneering the change, and we hope that other states are going to follow Arizona's lead. Uh, and you really have been at the forefront, and we appreciate, really appreciate that, especially thank there. You. Say a couple of words about that, Doug. Sure, sure. Well, first I want to say thank you, Mr. President, for your focus on licensing laws and the, the regulations that get in the way of this. We've really been focused on licensing reform in the state of Arizona. We want to make the state a, a place of opportunity for all. Uh, we began with military spouses. Trailing military spouses would often be in a position where they couldn't enter the workforce because their license wasn't recognized. We had great success with that, and we wanted to expand it. So we moved on to what we call universal recognition of occupational licensing. Not only is our economy booming right now, but our state is growing. We've got right. people coming from all over the, the country, uh, and they don't lose their skills when they pack up a U-Haul truck and come to Arizona. So we're going to recognize that license inside of the state. And this is really for the, 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 the little guy, the, the, the working man, the person that comes to, to town or to our state, uh, they, they, they want to earn a living and, and they want to get to work and uh, we believe it's a, a good reform. Uh, we think it uh, blows quite a hole in the, in the uh, mega regulatory state that is there while continuing to protect public health and public safety and just like I learned from many of the ladies and gentlemen around the table here, governors take good ideas and, and reapply them. Everyone here is welcome to take this idea and reapply it in your state. That's big good. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very you. much. And I think your border is uh, looking a lot better. They're saying over the last four or five days, uh, there's been a real diminution, a real lowering of people running across, coming across, needing to be apprehended, because what border security has been doing has been incredible. 
uh, like there, there, there are you is a, seeing a difference? There is a difference. There is a real crisis there, yeah. and I think it's still contingent on, on Congress to act, Absolutely. not only on the USMCA, but on uh, uh, adjusting the laws and making sure that the resources are there to deal with both the humanitarian crisis and the security crisis. It's true. It would be so easy to do. We could sit down with the Democrats and a very short period of time. We need the votes. Don't have the votes. We have to have the votes. And we could sit down, and you know we could sit down in a very, very few number of minutes and get yes. rid of— Yes, we could. We could solve the asylum problem quickly, and we could solve the few loopholes. We have a few loopholes that are just horrible. No other country in the world has them. And if the Democrats would agree, we could sit down and solve that problem. In the meantime, Mexico has really stepped up to the plate. Mm -hmm. I hope it continues. But uh, there's been a lot fewer people running up, and uh, they have 6,000 people on their southern border. As of uh, today, it's pretty much their force is fully intact and will be there. And uh, there's a big difference. But with all of that being said, as Doug say, has said, it would be uh, really to everybody's advantage if we could sit down with the Democrats and make a very fast deal. We've been trying. They don't want to give us uh, the votes. They don't want to give us the effort. And uh, that's a shame, because you have people dying on the border. You have people dying. You have children dying. You have women dying. You have uh, the human trafficking. You have drugs coming across. It would have a tremendous impact uh, on the drugs. And you have people coming across that uh, shouldn't be coming across. You have gang members. You have a lot of other things. And we're apprehending them, and we're getting them out. We have people all over the country. You'll see it starting uh, in a much bigger way over the next week and a half. But we have people all over the country. ICE, they're going out and taking out MS-13. We're taking out MS-13. We're going over the bad ones and getting the bad ones out. They've been here for a long time. And we're taking them out by the thousands, thousands of people being taken out, MS-13 and other gangs. They seem to be the worst, but I hear they have some others that are pretty bad, too. But we're getting them out. So with all of that, uh, if anybody would like to say anything while you have these wonderful people from the media here, please feel free. Would you like to go anything, Mark? Would you like to say something? Well, uh, <coughs> sure. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, I'm, I'm the governor of the great state of Wyoming, Yellowstone, the first person in the nation, and I'm honored to be here. Uh, I appreciate your leadership in convening this bipartisan group of, of governors, and I look forward to having a productive discussion, and I thank you for bringing uh, together the governors to seek and listen to our perspectives. Um, as President Trump has recognized them before, coal is important to our nation's future prosperity. Wyoming is a leading coal producer and has among the largest coal reserves in the world, and certainly the cleanest. The President has been a strong supporter of coal and of advancing new technologies that support carbon capture and sequestration that is critical in addressing climate change and can provide a bridge to a cleaner, healthier future and really good jobs. Progress on these fronts is imperative for Wyoming, and I look forward to working with you on it. And you know, in a changing economy requires an evolving workforce in Wyoming. We have sought to expand educational opportunities, including vocational education, to develop nimble workforce that our economy will need, allowing Wyoming to gain uh, the skills, the Wyoming workers to gain the skills needed to improve the quality of their work, their take home pay, and ultimately better lives for them and their families. The President's uh, apprenticeship program and expansion, and Ivanka, your work on that, uh, is an avenue for Wyoming to pursue the financial support for building our own workforce. Uh, we have applied for a grant and are appreciating the program in Wyoming, uh, which, if awarded, will increase the number of registered apprenticeship programs in Wyoming. And I will say, uh, Governor Ducey, uh, I'm glad that you're following our lead. We are the lowest <laughs> licensed <laughs> state, uh, licensure oh, state. I was waiting for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's what makes the country <laughs> strong, right? It's the competitiveness of the governors. <laughs> Thank you again, Mr. President. Really good job, Mark. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, Chris, you're doing fantastically up in New Hampshire. We're doing well, Mr. President. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, when you talk about workforce, um, I mean, there's, there's two issues that really come up. One is, obviously, we, we're at the tip of the spear on the opioid crisis. Uh, and uh, Secretary Carlton has been great. We created a program that came out of when I ran a resort in my previous life. Uh, we, we created something called, called Recovery-Friendly Workplaces. 
where, again, if you want someone to be in recovery, uh, there's a, a big picture there. It isn't just a 28-day treatment, goodbye and good luck. You need employment, you need family, you need community, uh, and uh, allowing and training the private sector to be, quote, recovery friendly. And through Secretary Acosta's grant, um, we've been growing that program. We have tens of thousands of people in New Hampshire now working for a recovery friendly workplace, which t dovetails right into what we're also talking about, which is uh, justice reform, right? Giving people a second chance, allowing folks uh, when they come out to have a job waiting for them. It's the same type of concept, making sure that um, we have 2.4% unemployment, I got more jobs than I know what to do with. We need the workers. They're there, and they, they, they really we, we need to be allowing them the, the opportunity to enter the workforce. And I also want to say, you know, what Ivanka and her team has done on uh, paid family leave. This is a concept that a lot of states have, have taken on. I know they're discussing it in Congress. Um, again, we've tried to find an innovative way where there's no burden on the taxpayer. Right? We found, we joining with Vermont, I think, I don't know if Vermont's gonna go forward, forward with it. I gotta call Governor Scott and see if, uh, see if they're on board, but a way to get the private sector involved and really for be able to provide a benefit without uh, an income tax. And uh, you do that through public-private partnerships, which, Mr. President, you have done more on the public-private partnerships in this country than, than uh, a lot of folks could have even imagined. So by putting some of these pieces in place, it really drives forward. The last thing, if I may, I do want to mention, when you talk about second chances, when you talk about, when you talk about the, the opioid crisis, where you're talking about justice reform and, and prison reform, mental health. I have all the jobs in the world, but we need to be working behind the wall, something your SOR granted very, very well, providing recovery programs behind the wall in the prison so when they came out, they're healthy, they're ready to engage in the workforce. You have to make sure make sure we, we appreciate the, the horrible fact that many of our prisons in this country are, are essentially mental health institutions, and that's a crying shame, so you need to have the programs there to make sure that when they come out, they're ready to be part of that workforce in a productive manner. You've created an economy with so many jobs, out there, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. The opportunity is there, but we got to make sure we're, we're appreciating the individuals as individuals and getting them the services they need so they hit the ground running. That's great. Great job. We need 2.4 percent. 2.4 percent. I'm competing with Kim over there. For yeah, 2.4 in Iowa, too. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think There's there's jobs. <laughs> amazing um, follow ons to, to what you just said, and I think it's so important. It's, it's because of the booming economy, because of the policies that have been put in place around tax reform, and actually, as part of tax reform, the first national National paid family leave program was passed to incentivize employers um, who have workers making under $75,000 to offer paid leave benefits. So we're seeking to do more, but that's a very important program. But whether it's deregulation or tax reform, the market is booming and unemployment is at record lows. But one of the most rewarding things is to see people coming off the sidelines and back into the workforce and workforce participation rates across the country rising. So just in the last quarter of 2018, 73% of all new jobs were from people who were on the sidelines of the economy, not even people on unemployment. So it's really, whether it's criminal justice reform, second chance hiring, um, all the work we're doing around skills training, employers are getting creative yes. and they're reaching out and they're creating better and more opportunities, better and more jobs for American workers. So it's it's very exciting and thank you for your leadership on this. It's great. great. Thank you very much. Thanks for saying what you Everything good? <laughs> He's some guy. I gotta put up with him every day. He's some president. guy. <laughs> there's nobody tougher than him and me, and then there's nobody that's better. Uh, he's a great guy, actually. He's doing well. Thank Give you. Give my regards, okay? Uh, Tom, please. Um, Tom Wolf, thank you, Mr. President, Governor of Pennsylvania. Um, before I was president, I've been in politics now for four and a half years. Um, and uh, before that, I was a business owner. And, and I understood that uh, it was really important to be able to get access to good people. Um, in my business, the best people were people who grew up on dairy farms and people who were in prison, who were looking for a second chance. Wow. All else being equal, and you, you made that point just a, a moment yeah. ago, um, you wonder why we didn't do it earlier than that. These are people who really want to want to work and, and want to succeed. So we have done a lot of things with clean slate legislation, criminal justice reform, to do what you were talking about, bring people from the sidelines uh, and get them into the, into the job market. Uh, in fact, we called our clean slate bill a jobs bill. Uh, first in the nation, I think still the only one in the nation, and, and we, we are uh, really working hard to, to uh, get people back into the, into the workforce. Uh, we're focusing on licensing reform, again, workforce development, brought the chairman of the, uh, president of the 
Pennsylvania State Chamber of Business and Industry with the president of the Pennsylvania AFL-CIO together to co-chair an effort to actually bring people back into the workforce and they're working marvelously together with the command center. They're doing great work. Uh, we've uh, passed a unique GI bill to deal with problems of, of, uh, of uh, licensing so that when a military family moves from state to state, they don't have to give up their teacher certification. They don't have to give up their whatever license they have from the other state uh, that we, we have that it's a good idea calling it universal recognition but it really helps military families and people who are mobile. Um, we're also on our way to implementing our first significant licensing reform uh, that has 13 points to it uh, and including eliminating some licenses altogether but making it a lot easier and reducing the barriers to entry to a lot of professions. Um, I'm really looking forward to this session because I think we can learn a lot in Pennsylvania as to what, what we can do, what more we can do, uh, and how we can partner with each other, with the federal government, and with the private sector to actually make things better for the people of Pennsylvania. That's what we're about. So thank you for having this meeting. Well, you made a great statement. I've never heard it before. The best people, people in prison and people that work on farms. <laughs> that one I've never heard before, but that's okay with me. You're making uh, tremendous progress, yeah. so that's good. Thank you very much, Tom. Brian Kemp, Georgia. Mr. President, as you know, we're doing a lot on workforce in our state. Like a lot of other governors, it's one of our top issues. Just we had the lowest unemployment we've had in 18 years. Had a great visit with Ivanka at UPS to see really with David uh, Abney there to see state-of-the-art training. Uh, obviously, our colleges, universities, our technical college systems very engaged in supplying the workforce, but we got a unique program, our Quick Start program, which has been ranked the number one right. job training, uh, training program uh, in many regards in the country, which we're proud of, but it, it will train qualified existing businesses and new businesses coming into the state and those that want to expand. So it makes us very mobile to be able to do job training. And then we also have specialized training centers for you know certain industries that we're targeting in Georgia that our companies need workers in and uh, we're doing that in, in manufacturing, aviation, bioscience, cybersecurity, film, the film industry very big in Georgia right now and also in FinTech and that's one reason we continue to have an A-plus rating when it comes to our, our workforce. So we are doing a lot. Uh, we know that's a huge issue on the occupational licensing front. Um, a couple of years ago, we passed a, um, a compact for nurses so they can join a compact so you don't have the multi-state licensing issue. Those licenses will reciprocate. We did that this year with medical doctors. That's very important, especially when you think of telemedicine, telemedicine and rural health care. And then something that's probably not on many people's radar, we did some legislation this year that our community bankers, our smaller banks, are very excited about to let them have better access to capital, which is gonna help our areas outside that are struggling in, in rural Georgia to be able to lend more money to the business people there to expand and hire in parts of our state that we don't have as much going on. So, you know, those are the, the things that we're focused on, but also the disaster relief money going into South and Southwest Georgia is gonna be big for our economy in the next year or two as we right. continue to recover. So that was a big deal. Well, it was. I, I, I know you were frustrated like I was. It took so long, but we're very grateful you signed it quick. And I've uh, been meeting today uh, talking about Hopefully there's going to be flexibility with the money in the form of block grants or other things so we could, our agriculture commissioner, there is going to we, be we, can, we can get that money out very quickly with transparency uh, and put it to work and right. they, they need it. Sunday's going to do a job on it, but it's going to go very quickly and I think nobody else but this group would have been able to get it. That was a tough thing to get and we got it for our farmers and for a lot of people. Well, we, we appreciate the uh, administration's steadfast support through all of that and, and all the folks, the secretary level folks and, and budget folks that have worked with us and uh, we look forward to working with you in the future to get that money out. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much. Kim? Well, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we're, in Iowa, we have a diverse and growing economy, even with some significant challenges with agriculture and the flooding. Um, but we have the lowest unemployment rate, 2.4 percent. We have more Iowans working than any other time in our state history. And here's the other part of the narrative, I think, that nobody's mentioned yet. We've had seven straight quarters of wage growth in the state of Iowa, and a lot of blue-collar workers are experiencing that. So, Ivanka, not only are we bringing people off the sidelines, but we're seeing wages increase, too. And that is just a win-win. Uh, 
so as I travel the state, here's the other good news. Because of the policies that you put in place, every job creator that I talk to, they are projecting significant growth moving forward. They're very optimistic about the future. And what an opportunity for Iowa. So workforce, uh, housing, and child care are three big barriers that we're addressing every single day. Uh, we've got a Future Ready Iowa program that has a goal of having 70% of Iowans in the workforce have either education or training beyond high school by the year 2025. We have a robust registered apprenticeship program that we're bringing into our high schools as we try to empower and grow rural Iowa. The more connectivity and relationships that we can build with our young people and our job creators right in our communities, mm -hmm. that's a win-win. We have kids that are coming out of high school that have participated in a welding apprenticeship program where they're actually earning forty and fifty thousand dollars the last two years of high mm -hmm. school and going right into a job right in that community. So that's keeping our communities vibrant and growing. So I'm really excited about the opportunities that we see there. I'm so proud to be a part of your Workforce Advisory Council to really create a national brand about the opportunities that exist in states all across this country to put some um, accountability in place and look for opportunity to really scale best practices that are working. The other thing that we did, and it's been mentioned, uh, mental health is a big, big, big piece of that. We did uh, comprehensive adult mental health care reform last year, and this year I was able to pass, working with the legislature, a children's mental health system. We've been talking about it for decades and nobody got it done. And it really, there's a lot of money that goes into the system, but parents don't know where to start. And so we've created a system, a structure, some oversight, some eligibility requirements, and core mandated services. We are also appropriating some funds to educators to help them identify early warning signs of mental illness so we can get these kiddos the services that they need sooner rather than later and to help buy down the wait list. So, uh, and, and before I wrap up, we're really big on second chances too. We're coming Good. back next year with criminal justice reform. We did some employer liability shield. We've got registered apprenticeship programs in every single institution. Uh, we're helping them get driver's license. We're dealing with transportation, living, a uh, place to live when they go back into society and, and, a, and a job that's waiting for them to participate in as well. So thanks for helping be a partner in what we're trying to do at the state level. Uh, it's incredible. It's been a great thanks, experience. Thanks, Ivanka. You've been fantastic. And uh, on top of all that, uh, Mexico and Canada are now buying a lot yes. of stuff. Yeah, and so we buy a lot of your agricultural products again, you know, that started as of uh, a few days ago. But yeah. they are buying a lot. Yeah. We need Congress to ratify you. Yeah, well, they have to get that ratified. Yeah. But <laughs> even before they ratify yeah. it. Oh, even that, yeah. But even before, they've, yeah. they've been in for a period of time now buying a lot of agricultural products. Hey, David, go ahead, please. Now, certainly, we are doing many of the same things. We're expanding our apprenticeship programs, uh, really trying to connect the dots between our education system and the job opportunities, working with businesses to embrace uh, new apprenticeship programs in healthcare and technology. Um, trying to uh, in, increase and improve the uh, ability of our high school students to get access to careers, uh, whether that's um, higher education. You know, we do have our, our uh, early college program at producing high school students that are graduating with Associate of Arts degrees. Um, because of our commitment to ensuring that all of our high school students have access to higher education. But we are also looking at taking apprenticeship programs that have been so successful, especially in the construction uh, trades, into the new areas of job opportunities in healthcare uh, as well as technology. So we're excited about that. We are um, pursuing a second chance and criminal justice uh, reform as well, uh, in investing in our prison industries program trying to ensure that uh, those uh, at the time that they end their incarceration have uh, quality job skills so they can hit the job running as well. So um, we're excited about all of those opportunities um, to uh, make sure that uh, everyone in our community has access to quality jobs and living wages. Thank you very much, David. Appreciate it. Good job. Bill, Tennessee. Um, I, I'm interested in the fact that all of us around this table are talking about the things that we're able to do because we have an economy that is so strong in this country because of the policies that you have put in place. And we in Tennessee share in that um, strong economy and that low unemployment. 
but we, we want to continue to improve. We want to continue to bring more people into the workforce and, and the work that you're doing in workforce development uh, is particularly interesting to me. Six months ago, I, I, I ran a company of 1,400 skilled workers, plumbers, pipe fitters, welders, electricians. That's what I've done all my life. I know firsthand how critically important it is to have skilled workers and the lack of them that we have in our country. So when I became governor, we, um, we rolled out something called the Governor's Investment and Vocational Education Act, the GIVE Act. We're providing dual credit enrollment at no cost to high school students that are enrolled in vocational, technical, agricultural career paths. Uh, it's a $25 million investment that's gonna set up through community grants, CTE programs in high schools that don't have them. And we're working with the employers um, as, as a former employer, knowing that I knew what skills I needed better than the education system did, then we're working with employers to help design those, those um, uh, curriculum for those programs. We also are doing something called the Future Workforce Initiative that set up initially 100 middle school STEM programs. We, we want to be the, an attractive state for the jobs of the future. and. I have an engineering background myself, so uh, we've we've rolled out this 100, 100 middle school plan, but we're we have a goal of tripling the number of STEM designated public high schools in Tennessee by 2022. We we think if we approach this vocational side as well as the STEM education side, then we're going to have a workforce ready uh, for the future. And so we're we're grateful for your for your advancing workforce development in such a great way. And, and I'll add too, that, yeah, I spent about 20 years working in a prison reentry program myself in the private sector in, in nonprofit work. And I mentored men coming out of prison. And I saw how criminal justice reform changes lives. It, it changes lives, it, it saves taxpayers money because we, we, we incarcerate less people, it reduces recidivism, and it, at the end of the day it lowers crime mm -hmm. and it produces safer neighborhoods. So we've invested this year in an education program for those who are incarcerated, knowing that a person coming out of incarceration reentry with a certificate or some level uh, of attainment has about a 40% chance of uh, more successful reentry than one who doesn't. So uh, I could continue to talk, but I, I'm, I'm excited to be here because the, these are subjects that are, are near and dear to my heart, but that are transformative for our nation and your leadership in them uh, on a national level allows us at the state level to uh, to get more done, and so we're grateful for that. Excited to be here. You know, Bill, thanks. It's really great, but very few people thought that criminal justice reform could get done, and uh, they've been trying to get it done for years, as you people know. They've been trying to get it done for many years, and we got it done. And uh, I guess they're going to even make some modifications and some additions to it as time goes by. And we got it done from some very liberal people and from some of the most conservative people in the country. It's an incredible thing. Some of the most conservative and some liberal folks, and they all pulled together. We, we did something that everybody said could not happen. And it was a tremendous package, and part of what we're talking about is the prison reform and all of the other things that we're doing, many, many things. And so it's an honor to be involved with that, but it was really something. And Jared and Ivanka and so many of the people, a lot of the governors helped, a lot of the governors States like Texas and states like Kentucky and uh, some states where they're pretty tough states, right? You, you bet. <laughs> like you. And, but some pretty tough states, they were, they had done it long before the federal government. You couldn't get it done in the federal government, we got it done. So uh, we owe a big thanks to a lot of people, but that was something that was never going to happen. And everybody pulled together and did something very special, so it's great. I'd like to have, ask maybe a, a man who's been with me for a long time, and he's still with me, but he's going to be going from, he's going to be working from the outside a little bit as opposed to the inside. Now he can actually speak even more vociferously. <laughs> Kevin, right, could you say a few words and just tell him uh, 
just briefly where we've come from and where we're going. You, you know, I, I think that watching all the governors talk about the great things they've done, uh, one of the things that wasn't mentioned that I know they've been paying attention to as well is the importance of childcare in helping single moms reconnect to the labor force, something that Ivanka's emphasized for the last couple of years. And you, sir, you might recall, uh, emphasized block grants to states so that the states could experiment to providing childcare and development to single moms. Well, I pulled the data right before the meeting this morning, and the labor force participation rate for single moms age 25 to 34 over the last couple of years is up next three years is up four percent yeah. and so and so it's not just you know basically well the, the way you get growth like this is you solve a whole bunch of little problems and so it's not just setting the top rate it's finding the little problems and and working to fix them and and then finally sir uh, that one of the things you charged me to do you might recall about two years ago was to look at all the training programs everywhere in government and evaluate them at CEA to have our staff do that and to issue a report that will make public uh, in about a week uh, and so the, the report's going through staff sec right now I brought a copy right here we, we've actually really done it and uh, but a sign of how much this effort has pulled everybody together is that Ivanka will smile that she gave me a whole bunch of comments this morning of, like <laughs> the things that she wanted to change in the report because there was literature that we didn't cite that we should have and so on but the point is it's really been a massive effort of this White House and it's really been successful thank you sir. great job thank you very much Kevin really a fantastic job that you've done, and uh, I know you'll just keep it going, maybe from a different little location, right? Yeah, well, Thank you. Easy. Very, very <laughs> talented man. Thank you. Thank you.